says one day Jesus was teaching and Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting <laughs> sitting there and 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 I think that's kind of funny because I believe when they're the presence of God is in your space you can't help but get up and move you can't help but get up and 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 worship you can't help nobody has to pump as we used to say back in my church pump and prime you to get uh, to understand the Bible uh, lets us know that God has been gracious in his love towards us and, and, and when I come from old church they said when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me we would say my soul cries out hallelujah I thank God for saving me anybody was once lost but now they're found in the blood of Jesus Christ I was about six of y'all, so I'm going to keep reading. And it said they had come from every village of Galilee and from Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was Jesus to heal the sick. They were all gathered in this place. They were, they were, they were having connect group one night. That's what they were doing. They were, they were in connect group. And the Lord was teaching and he was heading. And, 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 and people came in and they, they were a part of it. And it said, so men came carrying a paralyzed man. Because the church, the Bible says, is a hospital. It's a place for, for sick people. Then it says, and carrying the paralyzed man on the mat and tried to take him into the house to lay him before Jesus. They tried to take him to the place where healing could occur. But the problem was is they could not find a way to do it because of the crowds. And sometimes... The church is so crowded with church people that the broken can't get in. <laughs> so crowded with people who already know who Jesus is and just here to check Sunday off on their list that the broken are trying to get in, but it's too crowded. The people that are hurting, the people that need more from God, the, the people that have a heart and desire. And you, you don't have to ask them to stand up. You don't have to ask them to clap. You don't have to ask them, is God's good? They just yell out like they got a little bit of a Tourette syndrome. And you just hear them say, oh, and you just say, what is wrong with you? It's just when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, I get a little something, all right? So they, they, they're trying to bring him into the place of healing. But how many times have people tried to come in to receive Jesus only to receive the attitudes of church people? <laughs> because they didn't belong. Because, see, here's the thing. When he walked in, they already knew there would be something wrong with them. And how many people do we reject out of church? As soon as, they, as, soon as we look at them, we know that there's something wrong with them. Mm, they don't look like I look. Mm. They, they, I don't, mm, they, their breath smells like they've been out last night. <laughs> but there was something that Jesus said. He said, I didn't call for the, I didn't, I didn't come for those who are righteous. I came for the broken. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you, if you're a Christian and you're saved, you were a part of that broken. Jesus came for you. And for me. Yeah. And so, I, I'm so glad that there are people who God has placed that are persistent about making sure that the broken receive the healing that they deserve. And so, the Bible goes to let us know, when they could not find a way to do this because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and lowered him in on his mat through the tiles into the middle of the crowd right in front of Jesus. They distracted church service. They distracted the moment where Jesus was preaching. It, it wasn't a distraction free zone. It was a distracted zone. They, they, they came in at a time where the Lord was giving service and the Lord said it's okay because this is what I've come to do I've come to heal the broken so they lower him in and sit him right before Jesus and the Bible says when Jesus saw their faith how many people's lives have been changed because of your faith 
Is anybody around you uh, 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 feeling uncomfortable? Is anybody around you asking some questions about what it is that you have because of your faith? Is anybody receiving the healing uh, that they're supposed to have on your life, not out of their faith, but out of your faith? Oh, good and faithful Christian. Because the world should not be dying around you if you have the power of God in your life. That's just my take on it. I'm going to go back here and keep reading. It says, when he saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. Here's the thing. When you're going to Jesus for him to do something and manifest himself on the outward, he needs to start inward. So he needs to start with the brokenness inward for you to see the manifestation outwardly. He's got to address your heart and your mess before he can get to the outward appearance. You see, it's a heart thing. Tell somebody beside you it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. He wants to address the issues of our heart. And, and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law begin thinking to themselves, who is this fellow? <laughs> they call Jesus a fellow. Aren't they funny? <laughs> They didn't understand the power of the one that was beside them. They didn't understand. Many times we can take Jesus for granted and consider him to be just like us. No, we serve an omnipresent God, an omnipotent God. He's all-knowing, all-powerful. He's everywhere. He's right here and at your situation at home. He's that kind of God. But we get too comfortable with the presence of God and we begin to call him fellow. Wow. As if he's on you, my level. So who is this fellow? <laughs> Who's this guy who speaks blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? And Jesus knew, because I'm just trying to let you know your secret thoughts. I'm just trying to let you know when, when, when you think nobody else is looking, he knows what you're thinking. And it says, Jesus knew what they were thinking. And I love this. They never asked Jesus a question, but he answered them. It says, why are you thinking these things in your heart? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk. But I want you to know the Son of Man has authority. God has authority over every situation in your life, every place, every moment, every job that you're asking for, every freedom that you're asking for from addiction, everything that's in your life. God has the power over that. He has the authority over every area of your life. He has authority over your marriage. He has authority over every rule and space in your life. So you don't have to worry about the presence of God. You can leave it because God is there. You can walk away from it because God is there. It says he has authority to forgive sin. So he said to the paralyzed man, because God speaks to our mess. And then he, do, he does a move in our life. He says, I tell you, get up, take your mat and go home. And immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on. Because God never tells us to get rid of our story. He never tells us to get rid of the story. It's, it's amazing that we, we don't want to tell people about our past, but the past is the very thing that brings freedom to the people that are around us. He said, he said, your sins are forgiven. Be healed. Take up your mat. Go home. Like, get out of here. And we like to act as if we never had any mess in our life. We like to leave our mat behind and say, I got my healing. I'm out of here. And no, he's like, mm -mm, I never want you to forget what I brought you from. So pick it up and take it with you. You're no longer bound to it, but you will never forget what I've done in your life. You're about to sit down. Don't worry. I promise you. I promise. And so immediately stood up in front of them. He took what he'd been lying on. He went home, praising God. And the Bible says everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Every time that people encounter the presence of God, they should be leaving saying, we've seen remarkable things today. I can't explain what happened in church. I'm unsure of what it was about. 
I saw those people jumping on the stage. I wasn't getting with it. They kept telling me to clap my hands. I said no. They kept telling me to stand up. I said no. The pastor kept yelling. I was like, I'm not doing this today. I'm out of here. But there was something that happened on the inside of me that I can't explain. And I don't know if it was the worship. I don't know if it was the word. I don't know if it was the greeter. I don't know if it was the kids ministry. I just don't know what it was. But there was something that happened in church today when I encountered the people of God that would forever change my life. That's the power of the church. They were amazed. And things were remarkable. Today, we want you to leave out saying something remarkable happened today in my life. God changed me. He might not have changed my situation, but he changed me. And when God changes us, then guess what? Our situation begins to change. Can we pray this morning? Father, we thank you for this moment that we have in you. We thank you for the power of your presence that is in this place. Open our hearts. Open our minds to receive your word, to know that you are here with us and that you want life change to take place in here. We love you. We honor and we thank you in Jesus' name. We say amen. Help me celebrate God one more time for his goodness. Hallelujah. God bless you. You can have your seats. Such a pleasure and honor to be here. I am grateful uh, to be in such a place like this. It's always good to come back to Destiny Church. Uh, I, I give honor to my wife in her absence. Her name is Tamichia. We call her Mishi. Uh, she is uh, out handling some family business this morning, but her love is here. Her prayers are with us this morning. And, and I just believe that uh, God is speaking something. Can I tell you this? I'm going to tell you real quick. This is off topic. But life can be going on and you can still have the peace and presence of God in your life. Can I tell you that? Stuff can be jacked up, going on, you don't understand, marriage looking all floppy, job looking suspect, you don't know about your kids, I don't know about my kids sometimes, I, you're just trying to figure it out. That still does not negate the power and presence of God in your life. And so I, I, I just thought that was important because many times we can base who God is on how he is dealing with us in a moment. And God is not a momentary feeling God. He is a God who is above all things. He sees all things. He's in control of all things. Once we yield ourselves to him, we understand we can rest in the plan and power and presence of God to do whatever it is that he wants to do in our life. And so here's the thing to understand. When you live out that life, you're continuously understanding God is always and continuously working on us. Anybody God continuously working on, you know it. In your life you, you you know Jesus I want to let you know for those of you that may not be followers of Jesus we have not perfected this thing we don't have this thing under wraps we get this thing messed up I don't care how high the platform gets we are still in need of the Savior whose name is Jesus Christ and so that leads me to the beginnings of my confession as a pastor because I need to talk about things that happen on the inside of me. I am not always perfect. I know you can't believe it, but it's true. I'm not perfect in all my ways. I'm not Jesus. I'm not having it all together. There's some things that I miss. There are some ways that I, I don't see. There's some things I still get frustrated by. 95 is still a thorn in my side. 695 still makes me bleed in the morning. There's something about traffic that the Lord has used against me. I asked him to remove it thrice, and he said, my grace is sufficient. I said, I'll get her scooter then. But I had this thing with traffic. I was just in New York, and we were driving, and y'all know it's not good. It's just bad. And then I go to L.A., and, 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 and maybe about a year or so ago in L.A., if you, anybody that's known it, been in the traffic there, it's just not good, y'all. But I'm a pastor, and I, I was on my way to a Christian conference, because that's what pastors do, to lift up the name of Jesus, to worship the Lord. 
and to learn about growing his local church. And so I was on my way, leaving the hotel. I had a friend of mine that was with me. He was driving. I was in the passenger seat. You know this is about to take a turn because it's the passenger seat people that really have the issues. While I want to be in the driver's seat, I'm in the passenger seat. And in the moment, I, I, I'm, I'm in traffic. There's a tractor trailer. Everybody knows you think you can make the light, but you can't. You get stuck halfway. The people start honking at you. And so there's a tractor trailer. He gets midway. He sees he, can't, he doesn't uh, have the ability to make it. So he begins to back his tractor trailer up. You should never back up a tractor trailer anywhere but into a loading dock. Just nowhere. And he's in the middle of the street, and there's a van that's behind him. And so I want to give you my heart. I am the guy that is for the underdog. I, I come from Baltimore City. I'm east side, born and raised and grown. Some of you are like, mm-mm, haven't been there. Watch The Wire, but not going there. <laughs> I went down to the harbor. I had a couple of uh, uh, crab cakes. That's all I know about Baltimore. I won't cross the line. But I'm from Baltimore. I'm born and raised. That's a part of me. That's my heart. That's where our, our church is located. We're just in the heart of the city. And, 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 and so there is pieces and remnants of me that God is still working out of me daily. This guy begins to back up. There's a van behind him. There's not much space in between himself and the van. There's a white couple that's sitting in there. I'm watching this whole thing unfold. You can call it discernment. I'm not sure. I just knew something was about to happen. I stared there and I just looked. I said, I know he's not about to hit them. All of a sudden, this tractor trailer backs up and begins to lift the van up as he is backing up. I'm not perfect, y'all. Not perfect. I want to start this off saying that. I'm not perfect. I jumped out the car. <laughs> yep, that's where we're going. I jumped out the car so quick and so fast, I didn't have time to think. It went past the markets. It was just straight markets. And I jumped out. I said, hey, man, what you doing? <laughs> this is not my city. I don't know nobody here. But I couldn't help it. And I jumped out and said, man, what are you doing? You're backing into the people. He's like, no, I didn't know. I'm like, man, you, 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 you're raising up the van. Pull up. <laughs> this couple that is in the van are like this. <laughs> I said, get out. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> They're sitting in there quietly and patiently. I don't know if they were waiting on the Lord to push it. I don't know what was happening. But in that moment right there, I just, I just, I was like, so I'm yelling at him, stop backing up. I'm running over to them yelling, get out the van. He lets the van down. They never get out. Now I'm furious at them. Furious at him, and I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm flipping. Man, y'all need to get out the van. Say something to him. <laughs> In the other lane, there's a car. He's got a convertible open. Sitting there talking about, I saw the whole thing. <laughs> and you did nothing. He says, but here's the problem. He says, I saw the whole thing. They should have backed up. I said, excuse me? They should have backed up. And I'll testify for the tractor trailer driver. Mm, mm, mm. I said, what? I said, man, shut up before I hit you in your mouth. I did it, y'all. I did. Right then, the Holy Spirit said, I'm out. I'm gone. Because this ain't, this ain't what we agreed to. <laughs> right then I knew. He pulled off very quickly in his right lane. My friend, who wasn't sure if he was going to leave the church now, was like, Pastor, you, you okay? 
I said I lost it, man. I don't, I don't know what happened. I think I didn't get enough devotion in this morning. I'm not sure. But I lost it. And I lost it because my heart was for these people that were being taken advantage of. And I could see that they weren't going to do nothing. Eventually, I yelled at the man so much that he was so scared that he got out the van because he was scared of me. Not because of the incident that happened. And he went up to the truck and finally said something, but I figured if I didn't put my hand to something that was needed, these people would have been in a predicament that they would not have fought for themselves. And sometimes there are broken people in the world who don't know how to get into the doors of the church. And the church has been called to mediate for the broken and the lost. But we'll be like the guy in the car, sitting there, watching the broken, and not doing anything about it. And I think about this story of the paralyzed man who needed some guys to come in on his behalf because there are moments that are in our life that we don't have the ability to lift ourselves up. And so we're supposed to have a community of people around us that will lift us up and take us to where we need to be. The problem is, is that the church suffers from a lack of people who have a heart for the same thing God has a heart for. And so while we're worshiping, while we're giving God praise, while we're in growth track and in kids and serving, when we see the broken, we go the other way. And this is the part of just who I am. I, I have this heart because I, I feel that people need an advocate. And Jesus is the advocate in heaven, but he uses us to intervene where people need help. How many Christians are around unbelievers, but they never knew that you were a Christian? Hmm. Because you never offered your hand to help. And so here's the problem. I, I brought... A mat. I can't fold this one up, but this is a new version of it. This is my wife's, and we have a learning center, and so this is one of the cots that the kids use, uh, one of the fresher ones, you know what I mean? Um, I asked her to bring one of the... The, the. the problem that I have is when one person tries to handle the problems of one individual, eventually, when you're lifting, somebody's going to fall out. Can you imagine the paralyzed man only having one person in this corner and having to carry the mat? I, I don't think he would have got through the roof hanging on to the mat. Because we say stuff like this, if you really wanted to change, you would. The problem is I'm paralyzed and you're supposed to be the church that helps me. If you really wanted to change your life, you would. If you really wanted to stop using drugs, you would. Don't you get it? I'm paralyzed and broken by sin. And I need the help of a savior. It takes a community to help the broken. Too many times we're depending on one, the pastor and the staff, to be the people who help the broken when you, the church, have been called to help those who are broken. <laughs> you know what it feels like? You remember when you were alone and there was no one there to come and help you like you wanted to. You remember the moments. And so we've been called to be the church the ecclesia. We've been called to be the people who don't just enjoy the beautiful edifice and walk out and say, that was a good Sunday, loved it. Go into our cubicle and say, I rebuke the hands of the enemy around here. No, 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 you actually need to go in and begin breaking the bondage of the enemy. 
Because you've been set in the place for such a time as this. If your job has got some problems, then won't you get your powerful Holy Ghost filled self up in there and help break some of the yokes of bondage that stay in there? The enemy should not occupy the same land that you have called to conquer. I'm just saying. Or we can do Christianity on Sunday. Check it off the list. Make the speakers work hard on Sunday because I'm lacking a little bit, and I come to church and say, Lord, I need a word today. I tell people, uh, no Bible reading? You, you didn't, because the Bible lets us know in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word what? Was God. So if I'm reading the word, I'm, I'm getting God inside of my heart, and he's doing something on the inside. That included with prayer, because we do need to pray as Christians. I know we're new. I know we're fast. I know everything is about quickness. But you do need to take a moment in prayer and reading your words. 21 days of prayer is coming up. I would love for you to try it out. It starts today. Lord Jesus, help us to have your heart for what you've called for us to do. Because I want to be a powerful Christian. Do I, do I have anybody who wants to be a powerful Christian in here? Like, you want to help some people? Anybody want to help some folk? Cool. You're going to help some folk through the power of Jesus Christ. You're going to break bondage through the power of Jesus Christ. So the first thing that we need to do, first point, let's just pick up the heart of God. Let's, let's have God's heart. Let's, let's pick up God's heart today. Let's start having his heart for people. Let's have his heart for the broken. Here's the thing. Don't see the broken and turn your face. Because I know it happens. I, I drive every day in Baltimore. Every corner, there's somebody asking for something. They're the squeegee boys. They're those that are homeless. Like, I've seen all of it. Hey, bro, you think you can hook me up? With what? I can do your windows. No, you don't have any water, so... This doesn't make sense what we're doing here. <laughs> but here's the thing. I've had the opportunity to speak with some and, and connect with. And I'm like, what are you doing? Man, I'm just out here trying to, trying to do some things, man. Just trying to make a buck. Man, there's a better way. But how many times do we roll up our window? Because I'm going to tell you what we do real quick. Real quick. <laughs> oh, there they go. Let me get over. No, you can go in front. Go in front. Go ahead. I'm going to stay back here to the green light. And then you're watching, but not watching. Everybody knows that looks right, right? It's like this. Oh, my God, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. And the person walks right past you, and you ignore them as if they don't have value. Because when we have the heart of God, just because you can't give something doesn't mean you need to devalue someone because they don't have the, the opportunity to be able to give to them. You just got to say, hey, listen, I don't have it today, but I promise, what's your name? I'll pray for you. Like, can we start with something? I, I mean, because I know, y'all. I know. And they terrorize. I love the people at my church. We, I love the white folk at my church. They be having me rolling. I said, I'm going to tell y'all straight up, because we, we just like that at our church. We, we have such a uh, pastor. Um, what should I do with the young guys that come on the, you know, on the window thing? I said, the squeegee boys. Yeah, the, yeah, those guys. Yeah, those. What, what do I do when they come? I said, you roll down your window, like, bro, I ain't got it. I said, use that word, though. <laughs> Don't use no what. They ain't going to go away. You got to say, bro. I said, say, bro, and they'll do it. And they rolled it down and be like, bro, I ain't got it. It came back like, pastor, it worked. 
It worked, Pastor. It worked out for me. I said, I told you, I have an anointing over that stuff. But the thing is, they're no longer scared and they don't have to turn away and be fearful. They can actually operate. And so now they have the ability, well, Pastor, what can we do for the squeegee boys? I said, we first can start by giving them some water so they can actually clean the windows. I don't know how we do it, but I'm about solving problems. But God has called us to pick up his heart. The Bible lets us know in 1 Samuel chapter 16, for the Lord does not look at things a man looks at, a man looks at what? The outside of a person, but the Lord looks at what? The heart. He looks at the heart. He looks at the things that matters. He looks at what's on the inside. You can dress it up. You can put it on. You can, you can cover it. You can cologne it up. You can, you, you can sew it in, whatever you want to do. But I'm trying to let you know, it doesn't take away from what's on the inside. And it's the inside that needs the work. We put a lot of pressure on the outside, but it's the inside that needs the work. I stayed in New York recently. New York is a special place. And we stayed at an Airbnb. And I was, I was like, awesome, saw the pictures. Y'all know how they do. Great pictures, three bedroom, reviews like, fantastic. I was like, cool, cool, this is a great place. When we pulled up to the door of the Airbnb, this is, this is what we saw. You see how y'all just judge right there? Y'all see what y'all did? Every one of you, the Lord saw you. That's what we pulled up to. The guys that were in the car with me said, mm -mm, I don't think I'm staying there. <laughs> no, nope, not gonna do it. Cause my life is in danger. I said, no, I saw the pictures. It's just the door. It's fine. We got the keys and loaded. Walked into the hallway, it looked like something off of Boys in the Hood. I said, you know, my wife booked this place, you know. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not fully sure what she saw. Yeah, I transferred real quick, y'all. I did it. I was like, mm -mm, get it off of me. I don't want it on. And I transferred it off real quick. And we walked up a flight of stairs and we looked. And, and, and these young ladies came out the door. I was like, oh, is this where we're staying? Because I thought she might be the guest. She was like, mm-mm, you're not staying here. My house, you're upstairs, Airbnb. I was like, oh, okay. We walked up. There's something about when you walk up a flight of stairs and there is an escape ladder midway that you know you've entered a level you should not enter. But the thing of it is, is when we walked in, we saw something on the inside that you would never be able to tell by the outside. Marble floors, TVs everywhere, the shower that comes all on your head when you don't ask it to. <laughs> it was luxury. But the problem was, had we based it on the outside, we would have never took an opportunity to look at what's on the inside. And if we stop basing people on the outside, we could impact the world and grow the local church because people are amazing on the inside. Because that's what we've been called to do. See, I, I want to make sure that we are a church that's just not devout in our Christianity, but not devoted to God. Because we can check off the list, we could do every growth track, every connect group, be at prayer, like crazy, come here, be a part of everything, worship on the front row, jump high, jump low, jump back high, jump low, fulfill all of that and still not have a devotion to God. God's number one reason wasn't for us to be just devoted to the building, it was to be devoted to people. That's why you're on a dream team. That's why you're a part of the local church, because you get to impact people and be a part of lives that you would never have been a part of. I know I'm talking to you introvert people who talk to nobody unless they talk to you, sit quietly in your corner, mouth sealed up talking about, oh, you better not say nothing to me nor sit next to me. I'm trying to find the emptiest place. The reason why you have an opportunity to be an impact is through the local church. So take 
make your introvert, non-speaking, quiet tale, get on a team and impact somebody else's life. I'm just saying, though. I'm just saying. Because if you can do that, you can start what God wants to do in your heart. Pastor, I don't have time. You don't know my schedule. You don't know where I'm at. You don't know how I'm living. I do not. But I promise you, you're not that important that you can't give time to God. You're not, I mean, you're not that important. I mean, you're important. But you're not like that important. You know what I mean? You're important, but not that important. Because it's hard to try to carry the burdens of a church that's growing when there's only a couple of people who are committed to the work. Number two, pick up one another's burdens. You're like, I got enough burdens myself. <laughs> I'm going to pick up somebody else's. The Bible easily lets us know in Galatians 6 and 2 to carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you fulfill the law of Christ. God's heart is people. Somebody say people. people. Somebody say people again. People. Say it one more time. People. That's God's heart, y'all. It's people. It's the broken. It's the ones who don't think they're broken. It's the ones who got it together when they really don't. But, you know, we, we let them go. But it's the ones that God has called us to. And here's the thing. The reason that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Christians, is because God called someone to you. You were broken. I'm not sure if you know it. You're like, Pastor, I wasn't broken. I was good. I just came in and Jesus just added a little boost to me. Mm, I'm not sure if you know that, but you were looking a little dried up and cracked up before you started coming. God has given you some living water that makes you a little bit more fresher. Because we've been called. Pastor, I feel uncomfortable. It's not about me. I'm not all about the homeless people. I'm trying to get my own life together. You can get your own life together, but you need to be a part of rescuing someone else. Stop being rescued and then walking home and saying, I've got nothing to do with the other people that are drowning. We've been called back. We've been called to make a difference. We've been called to change some lives. <laughs> And point number three, lay down our preferences. Then Jesus said to them all, if anyone wants to follow me, he must give up himself and his own desires. He must take up his cross. Somebody say every day. Every day. Say every day. every day. And follow me. We've been called to follow Christ. I love the scripture about the church. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter preached. And the church just grew immediately. It said about 3,000 came to know. But it said this in Luke chapter 2, verse 44. It says, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold all their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God, enjoying the favor of all people. And then the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. You can't be afraid of those who God has put in your life. In this last moment, there's, there's, a, there's a guy in our church. We, we, his name is ATL. I'm not sure why they call him that, but I, I didn't dare ask at the moment. I just wanted him to know Jesus so that I could make sure our church was safe. And he is one of our greatest worshipers. We're going to put a picture of him up there. He doesn't look like my normal churchgoer, but he's the loudest worshiper. He's the one that we'd be like, bruh, we can't hear the worship team because you that loud. Because he has such a heart for God, turned away from drugs. It's been clean for over a year now. Just got a job, just got a car. God is changing his life like crazy, like crazy. It's a part of the local church 
and he just makes me look cool sometimes when I stand by. Because he, he is the example to me of what God has called us to. It's to the broken, it's to the people who don't look like us, it's to those that we seem to be so far away from. This moment and opportunity, I need us to take an introspect within ourselves and say, Lord, I need you to search my heart. Search me. If I've lost what's important to you, then I have nothing. But today, help me to have a heart for you. Can we pray? Let's pray today. Father, we thank you so much for this moment that you've given us. We thank you for your power and your presence that's in this place. We thank you for all that you do. And we thank you because in this moment, something remarkable is happening today. You are changing our hearts to have a heart for those other than ourselves. Give us a heart for you. Show us your way. Lead us into the perfect way that you have for us to go. In your name we pray.